I swear, I just started filming this video like 30 minutes ago and I was too far away from the camera. So I had to like change a, my whole setup. So. All right, hi everyone, welcome to my channel. My name is Exis, and this is my channel, Exis Does, where I do things. What do I do? A whole assortment of things, maybe? I don't know. But anyway, uh, welcome to my channel. <laughs> uh, and today, we're going to be doing something different. I'm trying to do a... I'm trying to do a get ready with me uh, at uh, 2 in the morning on a Saturday. Uh, going nowhere, but I just thought it'd be fun to do a get ready with me and have some more content out there for people to look at. So yeah, we're gonna, we're gonna do that today. All of my makeup products will be listed down below and I, uh, just kind of want to do, you know, I'm not even gonna call them GRWMs or grooms anymore. Get ready with me's. I'm gonna call them real talk times because that's what they are. I'm going to just do real talk and talk about things going on in my life and how I'm doing and how I'm living and what's really going on. So before I had to change my whole filming setup, I I did my eyebrows already and I also did my waterline. So I'm moving right into eyeshadow and I'm just going to keep, I'm going to just start over and talk about things that I have been, have been on my mind, you know, I wrote them down. mama likes to take notes yeah I, I wrote them down just some stuff i i want to talk about and entertain to you guys um and the first thing i want to talk about is like the start of my youtube channel wow i did it yay i started my youtube channel um around the same time last year one of my friends said that i should probably start a youtube channel and i was like no i don't want to and she was like no you need to and i was like no and um i had a decent reason to do so right like the youtube sphere right now is 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 dangerous it is very volatile it feels like every three seconds blink and then there's like some new spicy drama out it makes me wonder i'm gonna put my tinfoil hat on and it makes me wonder if the ceos are orchestrating this because they know that drama gets youtube views like what if like a, a batch of content creators, like reliable content creators that we trust are all in on like the drama and are all just like doing things to do them. Like the whole creep show art thing. Like what if that was like orchestrated by the YouTube higher up CEO of YouTube? What's her name? I don't know. I don't got my phone. But yeah, what if she like orchestrated that stuff? so that they'd make like some like edgy spicy youtuber only to realize that she's been gossiping about her friends this whole entire time on an lol cow forum you know like i don't know it just seems too so convenient and it feels like there's one drama after the other so that's one of the that was one of the big reasons why i was actively avoiding youtube i even told my friends this i was like i do not want to get canceled for saying the wrong thing at the wrong time but ironically, my last video that I made might get me canceled, at least from the cosplay community. I'm not sure. Uh, <laughs> I, uh, if you didn't watch it, my last video was of me ranting for 30 minutes about the whole blurred con controversy. What is with these pa- you see this? There's always patches on my eyeball whenever I do this concealer. What is going on here? Well, maybe people won't see it. Maybe they will. Oh, well. Yeah, so I talked about the controversy about the white woman who won the cosplay contest at BlurredCon. And, uh, you know, we just kind of unpacked that on my video. And I just ranted for 30 minutes about that cosplay as a whole. And how I think that if not mainstream cons, cons catered to black people should probably change since black cosplayers aren't cosplaying in the traditional way that they normally do. But anyway, if you, if you want to see that video, you know, it's on my channel. Um, it's been something that has been, you know, got me worried about if I get canceled or not. But like, honestly, probably not. Because at this point, um, there's just so much in the world going on. No one really has the time to delve in and, and cancel 
people for petty stuff at cons except maybe the founder of blurred con i think a lot of i guess what i'm trying to say is that a lot of people are starting to realize that the founder of blurred con is kind of garbage and we'll see in the next year or two where that goes if he's still going to be the the founder or the chairman of it or if there's going to be somebody else if they're going to reboot or do better by the viewers like we'll or by the con goers we'll see uh, but yeah, that's, you know, my biggest fear about doing YouTube or starting YouTube is that I get canceled or like I meet one of my idols or people that I like enjoy watching and they end up being terrible, like awful in real life as they are, as they do, completely opposite than like their YouTube or personality. So I was very nervous about starting my channel, but now I'm getting into the swing of things and I like it. The only thing I'm like, questioning or second guessing myself about is like the over editing that I do it takes me a while like my blurred con video took me like a couple of days to edit which I don't know how long a video is supposed to take you to edit I know that I'm very new kind of to video editing and um you know maybe that's why it took me a while but I also know that I did a lot of zooms and I added in a lot of pictures and I added font, text, I don't know, for the lols. But like, you know, I don't really know. I don't really know if like people are okay with the over editing or if they're like, they find that a little weird or like, a, like, oh, she's doing too much, you know? Um, I guess my biggest concern is that when I start my, when I start this channel, I want to come off as authentic as possible. I don't want to seem like I'm like fake. I want people to be like, this is how she is every day. Because to an extent, I am like this every day for the most part. I guess maybe when you're on YouTube and filming yourself, there's like levels of you that you show. And maybe when I'm filming myself, I show like the my peak level of, of myself. But when I'm like with my friends or my roommates, like I might not show that version of myself 24 seven. I, I really want to be authentic with a lot of the things that I'm doing. You know what, now that I've changed my setup, I could probably move that tripod and push this table forward a little bit. Hold on. Uh, oh, oh God. Oh God, why? I might have knocked down my water bottle accidentally. Anyway, uh, you know, I'm worried about like not showing my authentic self on here, but I'd like to think of a pretty like down to earth person to an extent. I'm pretty like upfront, like what you see is what you get. So I don't know, we'll see. But anyway, yeah, that's, that's something that's been on my mind. Um, biggest reason why I was nervous about starting YouTube is because it seemed like, like visceral. Like before I had to refilm this, I was talking about like the whole Gabby Hanna situation and how aggressive she's being with calling out people for just like liking tweets related to her in a negative light. And I was like, that woman is like the Candyman of YouTube. Y'all seen Candyman? That's a good movie. Gotta see that reboot in August. Uh, but yeah, uh, she's like the candy man. It's like you walk into the bathroom and you say her name like five times, turn off the light, and then you see her in the corner and she has like her cell phone and she's ready to like tweet angrily about you or like holding up her phone ranting with your name tagged in it about why you didn't, why you like this one tweet saying that she sucks. Like that's how she is to me. Like she terrifies me. Like the last thing I need is like for her fans to come and attack me yeah I, I guess my biggest fear is like getting canceled you know um especially for something like minor that can be fixed with like clarification i feel like for bigger creators they never really get canceled they just get held accountable but for smaller creators we definitely do get canceled and it can definitely fumble with our bags sometimes i don't think a lot of people talk about that how damaging that can be i've seen that with my very eyes like smaller creators smallish creators get canceled and then like people look at them in a different light or you know they're never able to rebrand from that again i guess i'd bounce back 
but I'm also like not problematic in that way. I'm thinking about regulating a schedule. Uh, I'm thinking about posting on Mondays and Fridays. And so I guess my Mondays would be like my, my real talk times. So I'm calling them RTTs, where I just sit here and do makeup and rant to you. And then my Fridays will be me doing commentary rants for like 30 minutes, talking about like some big issue on social media or like in communities that I'm in or just in general communities as well. I don't think I'm going to do YouTube drama only because it scares me. It just seems very stressful. The drama commentary YouTube community just seems... Uh, yeah, I just kind of want to be alone mind my business you know mind my business and drink water bitch yeah so i'm just kind of having fun with it seeing what works for me being a content creator in cosplay and stuff i realized that while i'm embarking on this youtube journey i have to start doing things because i like to do them and not feel like i have to do things because i need my like subscribers to enjoy it i just kind of want to do things that are just fun for me to do uh and i feel like that will be more healthy for me than constantly feeling like i have to outdo myself every other video so um or like following analytics i know one of my friends is like really good with analytics and she follows them all the time like me i'm just like no i'm just gonna i'm just gonna vibe and see what happens i really don't wanna i don't wanna get into the analytic an analytical aspect of youtube because they might drive me up a wall and I, I i can't afford to have that right now in my life so it is what it is but yeah Expect videos on Monday, Friday. I think that'll be a consistent and realistic schedule for me. Yes, yes. Um, so I guess another thing I wanted to talk about is if you knew me in my past life, I was a cosplayer and it was fun. And I technically still do cosplay. However, with like my new IG, I set my old IG to private and my new one is just like me rebranding. Uh, and I've been working on this rebrand for a while where I just kind of do different things, things that kind of make me happy or things that, you know, might be easier for me to produce content with. And it's easy to just produce content with like outfits and stuff. It's not too easy for me, at least, to produce consistent content with like cosplays because you have to like buy the costumes and they're very expensive. However, the whole crafting aspect and like making something out of nothing or even just like putting a look together, it's fun and I miss it. And so I'm starting to think if I want to get back into cosplay again. And I don't know if I will do it or not, but maybe I will incorporate it into my IG or at least incorporate it into like my content. If I do get back into cosplay, I think it would be cool to like document my process of making costume craft making like making stuff with eva foam or like my process of fabricating some cosplays i've kind of gotten to the point where i i really can't put that much pressure on myself to want to make cosplays from scratch like i could do it but it's hard and it's not gonna look as clean as i'd like to again it takes practice but it also takes a lot of time too and i think maybe if i just kind of like pick bits and pieces of costumes I might get from my costumes and like fabricate them a little bit maybe it, I can do something with that uh if I have enough money and resources maybe I'll just go back to doing really big build but right now in my life uh no I don't know if I should do that why is my eye watering I swear to god if I do go back to cosplaying I think I, I'd want it to be like simple you know and just like look at me make these horns for this Bowsette cosplay like you know like I don't know I don't know I miss dressing up I wonder if I should be silent for this because I'm putting on eyeliner it takes a lot out of me all right hold on a second this is a new eyeliner by the way I have been conditioned I have been conditioned into using um, Kat Von D's eyeliner because today, or it's not Kat Von D anymore, I guess it's KVD Beauty. It is one of those eyeliners, it's one of those makeup products that I have no choice but to coon for because of the quality of the product. And so, okay, hold on, hold on a second, let me, let me focus. And so for the Kat Von D eyeliner, uh, I very much so wanted to, like, I'm very much so used to, like, you see how this is like a felt tip? I'm used to tips like this, 
like where it's like a brush tip and Kat Von D's eyeliner was definitely like a brush very thin brush tip and I thought I could never find it and for the longest time I didn't know like why I couldn't use certain eyeliners the way I was used to Ooh, that's good Ooh, that's a lot better than the other side Ooh, me likey all right let me fill this in real quick eh, it'll look better with lashes Jesus Christ now would be such a perfect time. I would start crying now. I have been thinking about getting back into my artwork again. Yay. But I do want to start working on that aspect of my life again. So I'm thinking about starting up a stream schedule of me just streaming my artwork. Just literally gonna be me drawing. I'm thinking I'm gonna buy a webcam so you guys can see my face. It sucks that Twitch doesn't allow us to listen to Spotify because I think my soundtrack and my playlists are pretty lit. I'm trying to set up the schedule for that when I've had a very very complex relationship with my art and I, I don't know if I want to go into details about it right now. Uh but I'm pretty sure I will talk about it sometime later in my life or while I'm doing YouTube. It's just like right now I don't want to, I don't want to put bad energy on, you know, rekindling something that I once loved so much. And what I've noticed is that the older that I'm getting, the way that I used to go about art when I was like, what, 22, 23, is so much different than how people are going about art now. And I think it's great. I think it's a nice little relieving for me. But I'm just trying to take it slow and just kind of get back into it and not really stress myself out about it. Just kind of have fun, you know? So that's one thing I'm going to start doing. Yep, yep, yep. Yeah, but starting YouTube has been very fun for me. I've enjoyed it so far. Pretty good break from regular everyday life, especially like the stresses of everything that's going on. With the whole panoramic pandemonium panda express whatever you want to call it this is the watery eye by the way this is the one that's giving me problems gotta do the next eyelash oh whoa 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 all right eyelashes are on so i guess i can move on to the next thing i want to talk about which is rebranding i am rebranding and that stuff is hard it is difficult the reason why it's hard for me to rebrand is because i think people know me as being like a sexy cosplayer but like i've been in a rut it's been tough the pandemonium really got to me particularly particularly around like this time last year uh i think when chadwick passed on rest in peace chad uh I, I just wasn't in my right mind after that. It was very hard for me to like cope and kind of like function, you know? So um, a lot of personal things have been going on in my life and um, I have been dealing with that privately, uh, but I'm just kind of doing my best and doing content the way I should the to my best comfort level so far. Uh, I don't know if I've already stated this, but it's one of the reasons why while starting this YouTube channel, I don't really focus so much on the, uh, I'm not really going to focus so much on the analytic. So I think, you know, me rebranding will be good, but also like, I'm so, so nervous about it. Uh, cause I know it's not going to be easy and I know it's going to take a lot of work and I'm okay with that. But I think uh, right now I'm currently in the process of, or I'm in the mindset of, like, I feel like there are just some things I have to do and it's not fun for me anymore. So I'm just trying to find things that I enjoy and that make me happy. And, you know, producing content on YouTube so far right now with all 13 subscribers that I have, shout out guys. <laughs> um, it makes me happy. Uh, it, it, it's very, it's a breath of fresh air for me. I don't feel like I have to compare myself to anyone. I just stay in my lane, mind my business, drink my water. As the memes be saying online, as the, as the chillin' say on the internet. You know, that's, that's just all I'm trying to do. 
at this present moment. I'm not trying to do anything more or less, but still, rebanding's tough and like trying to stay consistent. Um, but I'm gonna figure it out, especially like with Instagram, because I would always get in my own head about like my IG quality, and I don't know where it came. Well, I know where it came from. I'm not gonna go into details for where it came from, but I feel like my quality is really good. Uh, but as of lately, I feel like I've been second guessing myself a lot about that with that. And so I'm just trying to figure out how I can pump out IG content and maybe TikTok content of quality, good quality. I have good enough um, mobile resources, so it shouldn't be that hard for me to um, make good quality content I guess is what I'm trying to say but yeah as far as like the personal things going on in my life like in regards to what I'm doing right now and how I'm like moving and stuff um I found a new career path that I'm very excited about pursuing and it seems promising um but I'm kind of nervous about it too um nervous about how it'll pan out I know the field I want to get into is like very tough and difficult and it's very competitive but like what field isn't competitive you know I just gotta learn how to network better and develop a portfolio and I should be good but I'm really happy about like finally finding something that is meaningful because before that like the careers that I had or I have or the job I have right now isn't as meaningful as I want it to be. I want to be able to utilize some sort of creativity that I have in me. And I feel like the job field I'm going into now, I'll be able to do that. And I'm very, very excited about that excursion that I'm taking. I know it's going to take some time. And I know I'm going to do it a very untraditional way. Um, another thing that's going on with me is that um, with my personal life, just coping with like breakups and relationship stuff which is hard I didn't think so but like I never felt like I'd find like I'd be the type of girl to be into like breakup music you know really dealing with what I've been dealing with um you know it's been it's been pretty hard I also realized that my tolerance for conservatism is getting very very low um uh I don't know what it is but I have a very low tolerance for it now. I was talking to this guy that we actually like hung out like a couple years back and we like caught up with each other and he told me that he was a conservative um and he was like yeah oh but I'm different you know I'm not like the other conservatives you know I am um, I am a smart conservative I'm not like those people who are like super crazy and you know worship Trump so it's like okay cool like I, I guess sure but lo and behold here he is like apologizing for trump like every five seconds like, okay bro okay yeah but like after like conversing with him and it was only for about 72 hours i'm not talking to him anymore i just realized that like ah my tolerance for conservatism is super low like i just don't have time for it because we are in a a, a time in our lives where certain rhetorics are dangerous like um and i you know you can yell freedom of speech all you want blase this blase that the the point still stands that certain rhetorics can be dangerous and not all of us are smart um and not all of us want to do a research and the research that we do doesn't really give us the truth as much as it gives us the answer that we want to hear uh and so I feel like with conservatives especially, something I notice about them all the time is that nine times out of ten, they're probably wrong. Their viewpoints are very much so in rooted in, if not sexism, racism. Um, they weaponize Christianity uh, as a tool. They fear monger. They do a lot of toxic things that are not good for the greater good of America, honestly, uh, especially for where it is going as a country. Um, they want to preserve, they, they, they defend fascism, nationalism, all that good stuff. 
they go to great lengths to defend these mindsets that some of the things they say aren't even truthful. I'm literally starting to get to the point where I can't have people like that in my space at all. I think last year dealing with what I went dealing with like George Floyd and the pandemonium and all of that it really like I just couldn't I couldn't do it anymore like I was just tired like my tolerance has been super low all right so I think I'm gonna go put on my lipstick right now My lips look a lot less juicy than they normally do. No. All right. Yeah. So. Okay. So yeah, this is the final look, I guess. It took me like an hour to film this. Oh, child. Hold on a second. Wait a minute. This isn't the finished look. Hold on. Okay. I guess this is the finished look. So here's the finished look. Like I said, I will put down all the products down below. Um, and I would love to hear you guys' um, opinion on like my content so far, if you guys like it or not, or if you guys think I could like pull back on some things. Also, let me know what type of content you're interested in me doing. Like I said, I really like Get Ready With Me's or they're RTTs now, that's what they're called. And I really hope to see you guys next time. Um, be sure to like and subscribe and I'll see you later. Bye. Okay, that was, that, 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 that didn't do good. All right, like, let's, let's redo that, okay? All right, all right. Bye. <laughs>